and uh, I didn't notice it, but it's already given me a warning to say, please check the LP design to get consistency. So this is a strange uh, bug in the tool at the moment, because if you remember, we actually did that. We did click on check LP BAM design. Everything was fine and it's still warning us to do it. So this needs fix. This will be fixed hopefully at the next revision. This is a redundant warning. Do we still want to generate code? Yes, we do. So it'll go away and it will generate the project for us. OK, and. Um, so now we have the project here and um, we have some extra. Uh, an extra directory in our uh, code tree now called LP BAM. And in here, there's the LP BAM app. And this has the configuration for our scenario builder and our, and our configuration. And uh, if we look at the file lpbam, lpbammap.h, this is the, the header file that gives us the prototypes for all of the lpbam functions that we need to set up the uh, DMA controller and the linked list memory block in the way we need them. So, for example, there's uh, the LPBAM init, the uh, scenario init, and scenario D init. So when you when you stop using it, scenario build builds all of the individual um, code um, configuration settings that we need to store into memory, and finally scenario start and scenario stop. Um, so these are commands that we'll be using um, in the code to actually build our um, DMA transfers. So first thing we need to do is to go and edit our main.c uh, file. So it's under core. I've already got it open actually, but just to show you where it is. Core source, uh, sorry, main.c. OK, now. The file I just showed you, the include file, needs to be included into main.c. So if you look in your cheat sheet now under the LPBAM hands on under cube IDE, you'll see all of the code edits that I'm going to make over the next uh, few minutes. And the first one is to include this include file. So I can click on copy code. And then go to the. Um, main.c and I need to need to paste that inclusion into the, um, uh, the the private begin includes which is user sorry user code begin includes which is line 24 or so so we stick it in there okay now I need uh, a variable to store the the the, the data the data sequence and I also need um, a variable for the scenario handlers. So we copy the next block of, of code, and that needs to go in the private variables uh, declaration. So we go to user code begin PV, and we need to paste the code there. So what we have, we have the DMA handlers, and then we have the uh, data buffer for the ADC data. And now those functions that I highlighted to you in the uh, header file, we actually need to use those functions now. So uh, in the user code begin to block, which is down here, in this block of code here, you see that first of all, we have some standard cube MX generated code to initialize the LP uh, DMA, the GPIO and the instruction cache, but we also need to, to initialize our queues. So we use those um, uh, functions that are included in the header file. We paste them in here. Um, let me just put a bit of spacing it so we can see what we're doing. So we init the uh, LPBAM mode. We uh, initialize the scenario, we build it. And then we um, 
point the DMA handlers to the specific instances of the DMA channel, so channel zero and channel one. And then we link the uh, scenario to this handlers and, st and then finally we start the scenario. The scenario is the collection of uh, DMA configurations, the link list as it were. OK. Now, it's important, as we said, if we're trying to conserve as much power as possible, that we turn off the debug block. And so, uh, and then once we've done that, we enter this stop mode so that we turn everything else off and just process the DMA transfers. So there's a block of code to do that. And we put it um, after our last set of initialization. That's what we're looking for. So we disable uh, the debug in stop mode and then we enter stop mode two. OK, and uh, this point. User can't begin to. Yeah, and it's. It's just um, if you look in the cheat sheet, it, it gives you a warning to say, make sure you stick it in the, the user begin to and user end two blocks, because each time you generate the code. It will rewrite the code except for the blocks of code that you've added in between the user code sections. OK, so as Jeff said, it's important to make sure we put it in the right place. So we now need to make a few alterations to the actual scenario um, files themselves. Um, so if we go to lpbam scenario build.c, which is under the lpbam directory. What we need to do here is we need to declare the variable that we used in main.c for our data sequence. We need to um, declare that in this file so it can be seen. So it needs to be cleared as, a, as an extern. So if I do that and I paste it into the user code begin external variables section or EV section, which is around here, there we go. So I'm declaring this variable as, a, as an extern. So it can actually be, it can be seen by um, this piece of C code. Uh, but if we go back to where we were, just to remind ourselves, because I've got lost, um, we, we basically declared the variable and uh, in the scenario build.c, uh, but now we need to, and again, interesting question why we're doing this, but it is the way it is at the moment. We need to um, enable the power supply for the ADC. And uh, you would say, well, OK, um, it's in the scenario that we've just created. Why do we have to create it in the ADC init file? So um, I think all I can say is it's early days for the tool. Um, I, I don't think we should really have to do that, but we do right now in the code that we generate. So let's go do that. So we copy that line of code. We go to um, LP BAM scenario.config and we need to be very careful where we po post it here because the function we're looking for is mx adc msp init there is a an, another adc init but uh, it's this specific one we want and so it should be around line 449 or thereabouts so if i scroll down OK, so this is a function and it needs to be in user code begin MSP init zero. So begin. So we want to put it there and it's important we put it there because it needs to go between the user code begin and end blocks. OK, if we don't do that, when we regenerate the code later on, it will overwrite our changes. So we need to put it in there and that is turning on the power supply for the ADC. And uh, now we also need to turn off uh, the timer or turn off the PW, PWM from the timer 
and we do that in the transfer complete DMA queue. So what I'm referring to is there's a function in um, uh, in this in the code um, with a callback that gets activated when we hit the transfer complete, and we basically want to stop the timer at this point. So I copy the code. And then find the function which is around 764. So down here somewhere. Uh, so this is the callback. So it's uh, ADC DMA transfer complete callback. And at this point, just turn off um, the timer. Now we come to the, so let's just save all these files so we don't get completely lost. So if you click the save all button up here on the top left, that will save everything. It will automatically save them when you go to build, so long as CubeID is configured that way, but it's safe just to save them all at this point. So now we need to edit the linker script and we go to the uh, flash version of the linker script click on it. The area we're interested in is this section here. Now, just like Jeff mentioned, um, you are using the link list in uh, SRAM 4, but it's even more important for us because we are turning off power to everything else when we go into stop to mode. So the link list specifically needs to be, and the, and the data buffers, need to be in um, SRAM 4 section. OK, now for a normal application, you wouldn't put everything else in SRAM 4. So you'd have to make sure that your specific bits of code were located to, them, to that section. And you normally use attribute section uh, keywords and we show how to do it here. However, in our example, it's not a big example, so we can run absolutely everything from SRAM 4. So we just simply modify the linker script um, to basically put everything in SRAM 4. And so that that avoids us having to use these attributes, but we do mention it and we do show you how to do it. But let me just copy this block of code and replace what's what's currently there. So it's this section in the memory in the memory linker script. And essentially we're just um, basically just limit, limiting where the RAM can go. OK. Now at this point, we need to hit the save button. And um, build the application. So if you it's, it's good practice to make sure that you, you're selecting the top level project name so that you know which project you, you're building. Select that and then click on the hammer button and build the application. So no errors, no warnings. So assuming that it built OK uh, with no errors and no warnings, we want to program the target OK. And I find the, the best way of doing this is to make sure that we don't have the power shield connected. So we've just come through a lab uh, with Anders where he was using the power shield. So I would remove the flying lead. Just the power one is fine. You don't need to remove the ground and reinsert JP5 so that um, the board is being powered by the ST link because otherwise the ST link won't be able to find the um, target microcontroller, microprocessor, microcontroller. So pull off the um, power shield flying lead, reinsert JP5, and then um, we can go and we can we can we can start a debug perspective. If we go and click uh, debug as, and then Cortex. Um, C++ application. We're not actually going to debug this. We just want to erase the chip and program it. We could do, we could have used the run option as well, but I'm using uh, debug just so we can see that it um, erases and downloads the board. Click on OK. And down here, 
you should see it connect to the target, erase, and then uh, flash the device. So it's nice to see as a comfort that it uh, ver downloads and verifies, and it says downloaded ver and verified successfully. So we swap to the um, debug. Yeah. Uh, so because we're in the debug perspective, it's obviously starting uh, in the first line of main.c, which is hal init. And at the moment, we can we can actually step through code because we've not yet turned off um, the debugging connection. So I should be able to step over this uh, hal init routine by clicking on the step over button. And it does, it steps over. So right now we are in debug mode, but if I hit the run button or the resume button, then it will run but then it will start to say target is not responding, retrying. And the reason is, is because we actually turned off um, the debug block in the software, as you remember. So it does that for a while and then gives up basically, and drops the connection. Um, so we, we, we need to, we, we can close the debug perspective, at least, sorry, debug perspective by clicking on the, um, debug icon here and clicking right click and then close if you still have it open but what we've done now is we've programmed the board okay so the board is merrily running away on it it's doing its stuff and now is the time where we want to actually use the um, power shield to measure the activity of the board 